Alright, section 2.6 for pre-calc here. We're uh, moving on to part 2 of rational functions here. So just do a quick recap of what I expect you to be able to do. Right now I expect you to be able to take a look at a rational function and um, find all the excluded values and determine if they are uh, removable values. Sorry, good hand right there. Uh, removable or essential. Uh, step 2 would be to find the domain in interval notation, and step three would be to find the zeros. Now we want to explore this a little bit more. We want to actually um, explain three more things. We're going to add number four, number five, and number six to the list, and they all pertain to these things that we've already talked about, okay? And um, the first is we want to talk about vertical asymptotes, okay? That's number four on the list, vertical asymptotes. And I am assuming asymptotes. Totes. I think I spelled that right. I'm assuming you guys have seen vertical asymptotes before or heard about at vertical asymptotes. And they're in a graph. Vertical asymptote is a uh, not, it's kind of like an imaginary line. So let's kind of, here we go. It's an it's a imaginary vertical line that the graph cannot cross. So what happens when the graph gets close to one of these vertical asymptotes, it, it kind of goes straight up or it kind of goes straight down. It can't go through it. That's a vertical asymptote, okay? And uh, believe it or not, the vertical asymptotes exist at essential discontinuities. So when you find that essential discontinuity, you have essentially found a vertical asymptote, which is great. Fifth on the list is a horizontal asymptote. And uh, a horizontal asymptote is uh, literally a, uh, let me kind of draw a quick graph of a horizontal asymptote. Okay, It is a horizontal line. So a horizontal line like this that you also cannot cross. Now, you can sometimes cross them in the middle. It's pretty rare, but it could happen. Usually at the ends is where you don't cross. So when I'm graphs coming at it, it goes and goes and gets really, really close. It never crosses and drops down below it. Same thing over here. Who knows what happens in the middle exactly, but on the ends, the graph gets really, really close. It never touches that, that asymptote. It cannot cross through that horizontal line at the end. Sometimes in the middle it can. It's rare, but we'll see some examples later on in class where it does. And the... Uh, and we're going to find out how to find horizontal asymptotes. It's actually really, really easy. You have to understand the degree. So if you can understand the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator, and we've talked about degree before, figure out horizontal asymptotes is pretty easy. And lastly, we have holes, literally a hole in the graph. We've talked about holes before. A hole is literally, here's the graph, and there's just a teeny hole where the graph doesn't exist. Holes occur at removable discontinuity. So we're learning new things right now in this video, but they apply to things we've already talked about, essential, removable, and um, degree. So let's take a look at an example here, and um, hopefully using an example, we can explore all these different things. So the function, the first function we're going to look at real quick here is um, x squared uh, plus x minus 6 divided by x squared plus 8x plus 15. So the first thing we have to do is factor this. So we could try to determine some of our zeros, top, bottom, and so forth, to figure out all the excluded values and whatnot. If you want to pause it right now and try to find the zeros on your own, then come back and check if you're right. Go right ahead. I'm going to go into finding the factors. So the first one's going to be x and x. And let's see here. I need a 2 and a 3. And we need the 3 to be positive and the 2 to be negative to generate that 1 in the middle negative 6 on the outside. Down here we need an x and an x. Let's see, a 3 and a 5 should do it. Both positive, that way they multiply to get the 15, add to get the 8x in the middle. Now the first thing I notice is that the x plus 3's will cancel. Or, better word, be removed. So I do get a final reduced value of x minus 2 over x plus 5. But I can't just ignore the x plus 3. They are going to come into play as we've seen in the past. So let's talk about my excluded values. x cannot be negative 5. Okay? That's the excluded value which is essential because it was only making the bottom 0. The other excluded value would be the negative 3. That would be removable. Okay, And that's because of two things. It makes the top and the bottom 0. 
and it also got removed. So actually, in the final answer, or the final reduce function, I guess, you don't even see it, but it really is still there, so you have to consider it. So um, that's the first thing we talked about finding. The second thing we talked about finding was the domain. So let's find the domain here. Basically, every number before negative 5 works. Um, and then union every number from negative 5 to negative 3 works, and then also every number after negative 3 works. Again, that's all old news. We talked about that in class on Friday. The third thing is zero. Zeros uh, make only the top zero. So x equals 2 would be a zero. It only makes the top zero. Um, I know negative 3 makes the top zero, but it also makes the bottom zero, which is why it was an excluded value, or that was removed right there. So next up, we want to talk about um, vertical asymptotes. And here's how easy, I call them VAs, because I do not feel like writing out a vertical asymptote every time, so a VA. A vertical asymptote occurs at any essential discontinuities. I already identified there's an essential discontinuity at negative 5. So the vertical asymptote occurs at the line x equals negative 5. And this is a vertical line that crosses at negative 5. So please don't ever just put a number here. It's an equation of a straight line. So it needs the x equals negative 5. Don't ever just put negative 5. It's not a number. You're being disrespectful to it if you just put negative 5. It's a line. Lines need an equation, x equals negative 5. So the uh, fifth thing on the list is horizontal asymptotes. We'll call them HAs, because again, I do not feel like writing out that asymptote word, which I'm probably going to misspell. And horizontal asymptotes there's a kind of a rule. So let's do a, a, a we're going to do a quick little side lesson on vertical asymptotes. Um, and here's that little side lesson. You have to compare the degrees. So let's claim that n is the degree of the numerator. Makes sense. m degree, n degree of numerator, right? n for numerator. Um, numerator, I don't even know if that's spelled right, numerator, whatever, okay. And let's call D the degree of the denominator. And all you have to do, denominator, I gotta spell that out, right, sound it out. All you gotta do is compare these degrees, compare the degree of the numerator to the degree of the denominator to figure out about vertical asymptotes. So the first thing that could happen is if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. So the degree on top is smaller than the degree on the bottom. If this occurs, the line y equals 0, again, that is a horizontal line. And y equals 0 is not just any horizontal line. It's actually the x-axis, right, is a horizontal asymptote automatically. It doesn't matter what the difference is. The top degree could be 2. The bottom degree could be 5. Well, the top degree. And the numerator degree is less than the denominator, so it's automatically y equals 0. The second rule says, well, what if they're tied? What if the degrees of the top and bottom, the degrees of the numerator and the uh, denominator, are the same? In that case, the line y equals a over b is your horizontal asymptote. And right now, you're hopefully you're thinking, what the heck is a and b? A is the leading coefficient of the numerator. B is the leading coefficient of the denominator. So you divide the leading coefficient of the, uh, wow, that's really bad handwriting again, leading coefficient of the um, numerator, and divide that by the leading coefficient of the denominator, and you will get your horizontal asymptote. Again, it's a straight horizontal line. The third option is if the degree of the numerator is larger than the degree of the, de, uh, de, the denominator. And in that case, there is no horizontal asymptote. So kids actually love it when that happens because it's pretty easy. There is no horizontal asymptote. There is an asymptote, though, but we're going to learn about a very weird type of asymptote that we'll learn about in part three of section 2.3. So that's it real quick. If you want to jot that down again, numerator less than denominator, automatically y equals zero. They're equal. You got to look at their leading coefficients, which is easier than you may think. It's really simple. And if the degree uh, of the numerator is larger, automatically there's no horizontal asymptotes. So let's come back to this problem now and let's analyze what happened here. Well, the degree of the top, look back to the very beginning is two. The degree of the denominator is also 2, so our degrees are tied. So look at the leading coefficients. That would be 1 over 1. So that means I have uh, uh, 1 divided by 1 is 1. That's easy to do in your head. So the horizontal asymptote is at 1. That's a straight um, 
horizontal line that crosses that 1. So y equals 1. Again, don't ever just say 1. It's y equals 1. It's a line, so it needs to have an equation, y equals 1. And the sixth thing that we're going to find, the sixth new thing, or the third new thing, right, so six total, is the hole. Holes occur at that removable discontinuity. So a hole is a point. It is a point. It is x comma y. It's a point that doesn't exist. It's a point that does not exist, believe it or not. So I have to find that point that does not exist. The x-coordinate of that point comes from the removable discontinuity. So the x-coordinate would be at negative 3. So if I'm actually going to find the hole for this function, it occurs at negative 3. And again, why? Well, negative 3 is a value that I can't be. We already said that. We have to skip over it. You can't be negative 3. So it makes a 0 on top and bottom. So that's where the hole is at. It's literally a spot that does not exist. It's negative 3. So how do you find the y-coordinate? Well, this can be a little bit tricky. First off, don't plug it into the original function, because if you plug in negative 3 to the original function, you're going to get a 0 on top and a 0 on the bottom, which is, does not exist. This is exactly what a hole is. What you do is cancel or remove those factors out that produce that removable discontinuity at negative 3, and then plug negative 3 into what's left over. So I'm actually going to plug negative 3 all the way into this final reduced answer. So negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. Negative 3 plus 2 is, I'm sorry, negative 3 plus 5 is 2. So one more time, negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2. So that is the y coordinate, negative 5 halves of this function or of the whole, sorry, of the whole. So again, this point, it's tough to think about. It's not a, it's a point, but it's a point that doesn't exist. And that's why we skipped it in the domain, and that's why we excluded it from the function. But we have to understand where that hole is at. Okay, so that is a good example right there, a good problem that kind of has almost everything that we're talking about in it. All right, let's take a look at a second problem. And let's use a little different color here. Let's spice things up. Let's use a blue here. All right, so here's the next problem we're going to take a look at right here. Um, and it is the function uh, 3x squared minus 14x minus 5 all divided by x minus 4. All right, let's start through the things that we know. First off, if you want to pause and go and try to factor it on your own, this is a tough one to factor, but it can be done. Um, go ahead, I'm going to start factoring right now. So I need two sets of parentheses on top, and let's see here, I need a 3x and an x, and I need a 5 and a 1, but how is that going to work out? Let's see, oh, if I put the 1 here and the 5 here, I'm going to get a 15 on the outside, 1 on the inside. If I make that a negative 15 and a positive 1, I will get that, uh, that's a positive one, I will get the negative 14 in the middle. Um, so that seems to work out here. Okay, on the bottom I get x minus 4. So first off, excluded values. I need to exclude 4. Why? It makes the denominator 0. It doesn't make the top 0, so it's essential. It only makes the denominator 0. There are no other values that make the bottom 0. So in my domain, I just simply need to go all the values before 4 and union that with all the values after 4. Uh, next up is the zeros. And let's see, zeros come from values that make only the top 0. That would be 5, for example. 5 would make the top 0. 5 times, let's see, this would end up being 16, but 16 times 0 is 0, so 5. And let's see, the other one would be negative 1 third. If I subtract the 1, divide by 3, I get negative 1 third. Plug negative 1 third in, I'd get 0 times anything is 0. So those are my two zeros. None of them make the bottom 0, so that's why they're not excluded. They only make the top 0. And fourth, I need my vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptotes, again, occur at your essential discontinuities. So x equals 4. Again, I know that I'm not allowed to equal 4. That's why it's a vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptotes are vertical lines that you cannot cross. So they don't really exist, but we have to understand where they're at. That's why it's x equals 4. Uh, number five would be a horizontal asymptote. Let's talk about the degrees. The degree of the top is 2. The degree of the bottom is the 1 right here. So when the top degree is bigger than the bottom, you automatically have no or none, right? No horizontal asymptotes. There aren't any when the top degree is bigger. That's usually a good thing. 
one less thing to worry about, I guess. And number six is, are there any holes? Well, holes only occur when something gets removed. They occur at these removable discontinuities. Well, we didn't have any of those, so there would be um, no holes or none. I don't have any holes. There are no holes in the graphs. So that's kind of a nice, pretty easy problem. Did not have everything, but um, we explored everything and at least considered the option of the different um, things that can happen. And let's do one more problem. We'll go back to green here. Um, let's take a look at this function right here. I guess this would be number three. And let's see, this would be x plus two on top and then x squared minus 4 on the bottom. So first thing is um, I need to think about factoring to try to do my excluded values here. So let's do x plus 2 on top. That's already done. That's nice and easy. On the bottom, that's a simple one, x plus 2 times x minus 2. So I notice that these x plus 2s are common between the top and bottom, so they will be removed. You may say canceled. I'll say removed, because that should make a lot of sense right now. And I get an x minus 2 on the bottom. So again, when, when everything on top went away, I had to leave something there, so I left 1. Because remember, there's really a 1 times in front of this parenthesis, so I just 1 still there. So anyway, what values need to be excluded? Well, obviously, 2, I cannot be. 2 is essential, because 2 only makes the bottom 0. 2 plus 2 on top would make a 4 on top and that wouldn't be a problem. But I also need to exclude negative 2. Now it was not essential enough to last till the end, but negative 2 does make both top and bottom 0, which is an issue that I need to at least consider, so it's removable. And again, it got removed. It's another hint of why that's the removable discontinuity at x equals negative 2. So my um, domain would of course need to be all numbers before negative 2 all numbers from negative 2 to 2, and then once again all numbers after 2. That's all in my domain. The third would be zeros. Zeros are numbers that make the top 0. Don't be foolish enough to say negative 2. Yeah, negative 2 makes the top 0. Yeah, but it also makes the bottom 0, which is why we've already claimed that negative 2 is a removable discontinuity, not a 0. Zeros come from numbers that strictly make the top 0, and if I look right here, the top is 1, so no values. There are none. There are none. Um, no values make the top zero. Negative two originally did, but it also made the bottom zero, which is why it was removed or it'd be considered an excluded value. So fourth up is my vertical asymptotes. Uh, vertical asymptotes, once again, are essential discontinuities. So it would be x equals 2. You don't have to put the line through it here, because remember, this is a um, line that we really can't see, but it's there. That represents the fact that at 2, there's nothing. I can't be 2. So it's a, a th very thin line that I have to um, understand is there. Um, and then let's see here, number, uh, I don't know what that noise was, by the way, but anyway, number five here is horizontal asymptotes. Look at the degree. The degree on top is one. The degree on the bottom is two. When the top degree is smaller than the bottom, when the top degree is smaller than the bottom, we automatically have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, which, remember, is the x axis, okay? It's still a horizontal line, because remember, the x axis is a horizontal line that I cannot cross. And six would be any holes, and holes occur when something gets removed. So I did have something get removed, and a hole is a point. Don't ever forget that. It's a point that does not exist. DNE does not exist. And that hole that doesn't exist occurs at negative two, because that's where we said that the excluded value was. So to figure out um, what the y coordinate is, don't plug it into the original problem, because you're going to get zero over zero. Plug it into this reduced answer right here. So I get one over negative two minus two is negative four. So my hole's y coordinate is at negative one fourth. So this is a point, negative two, negative one fourth, that doesn't really exist. But I need to at least know where it's at. So those are the three things, I'm sorry, six things that I want you to be able to do. We've already talked about removable and um, essential discontinuities, excluded values. We talked about domain. We talked about zeros. Now we added vertical asymptotes, which are essential discontinuities. We talked about horizontal asymptotes. You've got to think about the degree. And we talked about holes. Holes are uh, points that do not exist, which is why they were removed, and they were excluded values. They were discontinuities in the graph. To draw a hole, you have to lift up your pen to draw it, um, and you have to at least identify where that hole's at. So hopefully you understood how to find those values, and we will do more worksheets with this on Monday. So I hope you guys have a, grad, uh, a great weekend, and uh, Porn Check is out.